Kobusi, Kobosi, how do you pronounce his name? Kobosil. Kobosil speaking very highly again of Bergheim, um, talking about how much he loves his crew. I'm not sure why I've got this on the list here, but I thought I'd read it anyway because I think it's interesting and it's something that you guys might be interested in too. So this is what I usually do for the most part when I'm, you know, at the weekend because I like to just browse and find out what's happening at Bergheim. So usually I'll usually click the location post of a recent post of someone that's been at Bergheim Panorama Bar. And on Instagram, especially the desktop app, you get the app, you get the option to kind of just scroll through all the recent images, right? You got this great picture of um, uh, Marcel Dietman wearing a slightly tight shirt that he must have got, I think, when he first was playing at the Bergheim, while Oscar got at the back, saying back to zero. The shirt's slightly small, but that's quite funny. But again, you get people uploading all the images, usually standing outside of the Bergheim, having been rejected, or just generally talking about how great of a time they had when they were at this space, right? So those are cool images you can go through. And if you're lucky, you can find a story of somebody that went to the Bergheim. Um, this is not a good time to do it, but sometimes you might upload images of videos. This is about one of them at the actual club showing what actually happened and you hear some music in the background blah blah, blah 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 right that's usually the vibe that i kind of go for so let's go back to the post um from kobo still talking about his crew so this is something that i've already read but i want to quickly check it out with you guys so this is the following um this is uh Kobosi took a picture which is interesting i think he was the person that was accused of or the rumors around the internet forums or the techno forums is that supposedly Kobosi was the guy that was banned for a short period of time of being a resident at the burger, which is great, right? He had a temporary ban. I, w- I wasn't sure that was a thing. Because um, I think if you're a DJ and you get the chance to be a resident DJ at the fucking Bergheim, right? Or the Panorama Bar, you're going to do everything in your power not to fuck that up, right? Because I'm sure, much like the comedy store in Los Angeles, it- it's a good way for you to kind of get your name out there and become a bigger draw or brand name for others, right? I'm assuming so. Maybe, I don't know how it works out. I don't know if whether or not actually playing there actually gives you more bookings or if it's more so a thing of just personal pride because we're all big techno fans, we're all big dance music fans, electronic music fans. So once you get booked somewhere like that, it's more so of a personal victory for yourself. Maybe it's not such a big deal for festival because of an event book. I'm not sure. I don't know what the deal is, but um, it's a big deal. And he got banned, right? Because he was acting a bit of a lad and he did some things he probably wasn't meant to be doing behind a DJ booth. And... Um, it seems like he's been reinvited. He's been kind of welcomed back into the fold, which is great to see. I think for the most part, it goes to show that maybe as an institution, he's not the first and won't be the last of a DJ to kind of act out on the dance floor and get a bit too crazy. So they probably have these measures in place already where they are able to kind of, you know, look at the crime uh, and then deem a punch, a deem a pun- and then kind of enact a punishment that is in relation to the crime but it also have a path back to redemption for the person to come back into the scene because I'd imagine with a dance music scene, the scene much like what I've been reading in the horrifying book um, Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrell, you know, talking about the whole Me Too movement that, spurt, that kind of come off the back of the Harvey Weinstein allegations. Um, I would imagine much like the Hollywood scene, dance music scene is pretty small, right? I'd imagine if you kind of get a reputation of being a bit of a douche or you know being a, a problem to deal with for clubs they'll probably just stop booking you i'd imagine so it happens a lot in hollywood right which is why a lot of those women were af- afraid of coming out and saying anything because their reputations were going to be damaged and they didn't want someone to smear them and say they're difficult to work with which happens to rose mcgowan basically isn't it? That's essentially what killed her career um in mainstream kind of hollywood um scenes so uh but it's cool that they've got a, a plan in place to kind of redeem a path back to redemption i would say that's pretty interesting to see isn't it one of the biggest clubs in the world is able to forgive and forget one of their prominent DJs and residents who should know better and welcome back into the fall it's a lesson that probably it's a lesson that maybe more on the scene should probably heed and sure take notice of i would imagine so especially concerning some other situations that have happened to other djs in the past or might happen to other DJs going forward especially considering the fact that you know we all adults and we'll have to understand that people all, that go to nightclubs or go to these dark places, you know, are not the most uh, uh, straight-laced people in the world, let's say, for, for lack of a better term. So to have some, so to have something in place to that takes that into consideration and also is able to say, hey, I know you messed up, I know you did bad, but we're in a path of redemption here, but don't mess up again because if you mess up again, you're completely out of the picture. And I think most of the time, I know for me personally, when I've, being called out for being a douche or for you know acting out when i went out and being too drunk or you know just being a lad 
and you get called out by your friends, usually, you know, you only need one warning if you're a decent person. You don't need to be told several times. I'd imagine even more so for a DJ. So it's quite great to see this anyway. Um, but anyway, let's move on to his actual statement regarding the whole club night that he had. I'm pretty sure loads of DJs do this after I think, you know, Ber- Bergen has that magical effect for professionals who play every week around the world and get paid thousands of pounds. They still go to this little, or not little, this, you know, this massive concrete cube in the middle of Kreuzberg and they still flipping, you know, write essays about their experience afterwards. It's an amazing effect on the club. Um, he says the following, Kobosu, Kobosu, how do you pronounce it? Kobosu or Kobosu? So there's a following on Instagram. Incredible scenes on Thursday night. Uh, the picture was made just before opening the doors. I can't say enough that I'm very proud to have you all behind my back. Many people were asking last night why I opened like that. I had and will have time slots in the future where I can show full force. But last night I wanted the new artists on my label to breathe. They need their stage and chance. Uh, what I already got. Beautiful performance from his artist, one person here called Roseanne Stro something, followed by my brother Parallax and an insane Rifka R23 live set. Please imagine how he f- how he feel today. Coming from nothing and end up to play at such a lovely and open crowd last night, not to forget Power Girl, Clara Carve and her banging ending. Honestly, thank you for changing our life and true loyalty and love music, which is awesome, right? I guess he had the opportunity I guess it must have been a label night or label promotion or something along those kind of lines. And instead of, you know, hogging the limelight. And again, this is Thursday night just before Burkhan actually opens. So the fact that he's able to kind of give his artists time to breathe, right? Give them the opportunity to actually play at the opening set when everyone's kind of pouring through the doors is amazing. It's really cool to see. And something that isn't, um, you know, something that shouldn't go without saying, actually. Um I think it must be quite tempting when you're a bigger DJ to just take up all the limelight, especially at a place like that. You wouldn't be you wouldn't be remiss for doing that. But to give your artists the time to breathe and to do their own thing, I guess they they were they must have been really, really over the moon about the whole situation. I'm pretty sure that was part of it. So again, big up Kabulsi for allowing his artists to breathe. I wish we had more people doing that. And again, I think just in general, the fact that they have residents at Burkhine, the fact that one of the biggest clubs in the world has resident DJs and some other clubs in London, for the most part, don't have any resident DJs. They don't actually push them that well. It goes to show just how far behind other places are. And again, maybe it's just the fact that, you know, I think for the, for the fact we don't have residents in London, but we do have a very thriving club scene. You can go to, I think that's one part, that's one bit of London that can't be contested. The fact that any given night you can go out and you could hit up a club night, whether it's reggae, dub, break, uh, breakbeat, uh, jungle, dubstep house techno disco tech house business techno lounge house wherever you could wherever you want you can find it you can find it in london for the most part if you go to berlin it's just the same stuff right it's mostly techno and house maybe a sprinkle of disco here and there there are some hip-hop and urban quote-unquote clubs that are popping up or club nights are popping up especially in kreuzberg i know there's one in neuklund as well in some like um sports hall arena thingy that they have but for the most part it's mostly mostly techno and house in it so that's probably one of the things that kind of sell that kind of pushes uh london over some of the other places but again um i think what you're seeing from some of these bigger artists you know the fact that they are able to write these essays about place probably shows that they're probably leading the way in general the things that they're doing i would say anyway right probably what would you say yeah i'm, I'm sure you